White just back after a very nasty bout of tonsillitis. Grid three had Simon Wiggs, who indeed had a knock after the Coventry match last week. Uh, concussion still didn't stop him qualifying for the World Long Track Final, but uh, he'll be back and obviously 100% again. And on the outside, veteran figure in the Pirates lineup in yellow and black, that's Vaslav Verna from Czechoslovakia, multiple world finalists, a bit long on the tooth these days, but uh, do our old campaigner. Heat one. Remember, it's the usual league format, three points for a win, two for a second, one for a third, four laps, clutch start, the bikes have no brakes, kind of fixed gearing, and here we go for heat one, and oh dear. And uh, the rider in yellow and black, Pat Verna, is a judge to have been the cause of the tapes being broken. And there is Verna, not looking too happy with that decision. It will be interesting to see it again because they've certainly made a mess of the tapes. Well, let's keep an eye on the rider on the outside. Vassal Vernon, was he the man who first touched the tapes? Yes, he was. And Michael Lee went through them, but referee Stan Green, quite right. Vernon must go. The full reserve, Eric Stenland, coming into the action to replace Vassal Vernon excluded for tape breaking in heat one interesting character this lad a swede from getting ghana protege of former world champion anders michenek and he was third in the world ice speedway final better known as an ice racer but uh, making a name for himself and growing in reputation on scale as well eric stanland comes into the yellow and black helmet on the outside in heat one looking across the line again on the inside lands king crazy next to him michael lee in white for the Pirates. Grid three has Simon Wig in red on the outside. Reserve replacement Eric Stenland in yellow and black for Paul Pirates. Heat one, and uh, we can but hope they get away cleanly this time. Well, there is Simon Wig, who has rapidly established himself as the glamour boy to replace Bruce Pennell here at Dudley Wood Stadium impatient to get on with the action. Here we go, heat one. And the heathens hit the corner in front. On the inside, it is King. On the outside, it is Wig. Michael Lee's in third place, and that really was a lightning start from the two great heath riders. Well, side by side, this young partnership looking very good indeed to open the crazy attack. Michael Lee world champion back in 1980 is still in touch with any chest. They really are riding perfectly together as a pair. King hugging the line, wig on the outside. They forced a tremendous understanding that looked like something flew clear of Wig's machine there. Might have been his steel shoe, but certainly something uh, was seen in midair around by the pitch last time around. Now King in front, big on the outside, Lee. Really made no round at all over the line, just on the line, a win for Lance King. Second place, Simon Wig, five points to one. And that really is the most convincing opening by the heathen. Well, it looked like Lance King's machine threw something off as they hit the corner of the pit corner here on lap three. Just watch on the inside. It could have been a chain guard which came free, but very clearly they were flying missiles just around about now. You'll see it comes zooming off and hits the fence. Might have been dangerous if somebody had been outside him. Well, the first and second thin has been declared, and that means a maximum opening heat win for the Heathens. Five to Cravely, one to Tall. There are the Tall promotion team, the figure on the right there, well known in the Midlands, uh, Pete Jarman, for so, old, so long a star at Stoke and Wolverhampton. And just out of our picture, the Tall co-promoter, Brian Mabin, looking a little anxious after that uh, disappointing start in heat one. Moving into heat two on the inside, Andy Campbell White. Next to him, Jan Peterson, blue. Grid three has Stenham coming straight out on the outside. Peter Rawn in red. So two Danes in there for the Heathens. And in terrible trouble there with Peterson. Rawn sweeps into the lead. Second place is Stenland. Third is Campbell. We look at the back there as Peterson makes stride up on the outside of Campbell. And oh, Stenland almost overtook the corner. And Peterson took the opportunity. So once again, it's the Heathens giving them the old one-two. Rawn leads it, second place Peterson, third now Campbell. And Eric Stenland at the back, who uh, picked up.
have a bit of drive there at the end of the first lap. Campbell at home here at Dudley Wood are showing us just why they're favourites for the British League Championship. And here they are making it look easy, the two Danes. Outside it's Vaughan, inside it's Peterson, and they're a mile in front. Tremendous team riding. Their understanding uh, is pretty well telepathic. Over the line, another maximum heat win for Tradley. So the opening two heats, two maximum heats for the Heathens, they now lead 10 points to two. Heat two was the story of two wheelies. You can see Jan Peterson in grid two did awfully well to get the bike back under control after it had pulled the air. It allowed his teammate Peter Rawns to grab the advantage around the first two corners. In second place there, Eric Stenland. Third place is Andy Campbell. Now Peterson rectifies his mistake, gets around the outside of Campbell as they run down the back straight. And as they get into the pit corner, keep an eye on the rider in second place. That's Eric Stenland, because he uh, hits a horrendous wheelie just as they hit the apex of the corner. And Peterson swinging back under. Look at Stenland go. Oh, well, there's room for a bus to go through there. And uh, Jan Peter says, thank you very much. And that's another maximum heat win for the Heathens. Well, here's one of the great characters in the speedway, Neil Middleditch in the white helmet for Poole here, son of a famous uh, old pirate, Ken Middleditch, who Midland fans long on the tooth will recall. We look at the lineup for Heat 3. On the inside there, Alan Graham next to him, Neil Middleditch. Grid 3 has Phil Collins, and on the outside it's Kevin Smith for the Pirates. And from the outside, it is Collins, and coming with him is Smith, although Graham has got round on the curb. And again, it's the old story of Cradley 1-2. In front, Collins, the overseas champion. In second place, Alan Graham. Third place, Kevin Smith at the back middle itch. Well, at the moment, the Heathens are having everything their own way. They opened with two maximum heat wins. They've only got uh, another lap to go, 337 metres around Dudley Wood to make it three maximum. And one can but look at Poole, who have a lively sight on lineup and wonder how they're going to stop the rocks. Bradley look in a ruthless move. A win for Collins, second place Graham, third with Smith. And that's the third consecutive maximum heat win, and that really is a flying start for Cradley. Bit of a landslide, isn't it? Cradley 15, Poole 3. So into the action comes the trade lead number one and skipper Eric Gunderson coming out for heat four. Gunderson, of course, one of Denmark's World Cup final squad on Friday evening. We'll be seeing that on ITV exclusively on Saturday afternoon. And uh, one fancies perhaps that Gunderson might have hotter opposition in his native land than here at the moment. The Pirates have been a great disappointment. Only three points in the opening three races for the visitors. And uh, we look across the line there is Gunderson here we are the outside here in heat four and Poole bring in uh, their glamour boy England international John Davis he's on the inside wonder if JD who has been known to ride for the occasion will do something to put Poole back in the picture so let's have a look at the lineup Davis on the inside next to 